a new idea. How about I show what I got first and apologize later? Because if I start explaining what happened and where I was, we'll be here like for a long time without even like talking about perfumes. And I also kind of feel all of these like explanatory little like, stories about you know like life and events. Like nobody really cares, right? Like unless unless you became like the star of of some kind of documentary, like nobody gives a shit. So I'm just gonna show you what I got. So this is a celebratory haul because I got a new job and in expectation of my first paycheck, yes, I haven't, I haven't even gotten paid yet, but I know it's coming, I decided to splurge a little bit and treat myself to a few bottles. So first things first, um, this is something I've been kind of slowly working through. This is a shower gel by Amouage. Uh, probably the most expensive shower gel ever in my life story. No regrets. Um, I got myself Lyric, as you can see, like I'm halfway through. It's very dense. The intensity and believability of the scent, I would give it like 7 out of 10. But it still kind of gives you a very nice introduction to what the what the perfume is about without actually committing to a full-size bottle, which would be well over $200 per bottle. So I think the Amouage shower gels go for roughly, if you're lucky, 40 if you're unlucky, 60 to $70 a bottle. And they last a long time, that I'll give it. Um, and I really enjoyed the Lyric. This is a uh, Lyric for woman. But this sweet kind of almost syrupy type of rose with a little bit of a backbone of, it's not oud, it is incense. It's something that I rather enjoy as a relaxation, kind of like, you know, imagine like the hot shower, the vapor, when you're just washing off all the stress and all of the worries. That works really well. As a personal perfume, I cannot imagine myself wearing something just so potently sweet. So I'm super happy with Amoa shower gels and as I'm working from this one, I decided to try a few more. Again, as another more like affordable and more interesting for me way to sample scents without buying full-size bottles. So I got myself two more from Amoa. This is Amouage Journey Woman, and this is a fake unboxing because I already started using them. Let me tell you, when I get a new box of perfumes, this is not a pretty sight. I don't think you'll ever see unboxings on, on my channel because this is just, it gets wild. Let's just say that. Anyway, Amouage Journey for Women is described by many as, again, very syrupy, very intense, sweet, Kind of like apricotty jam with certain leathery and spicy notes. <sighs> yes, it has all of that, and yet it's again, it's a bit too much, it's a bit too sweet for my personal taste. So I do enjoy it as a shower gel, but it like as a perfume, I don't think I would be able to withstand more than one spray, to be honest. So Journey for, for Woman, Journey Woman is, again, if you're into tropical kind of, not necessarily tropical, but kind of fruity gourmands, that could be it for you, especially given that the rumors that Amouage is reformulating a lot of their staples. But for me, shower gel is more than enough, and more than likely I will actually mix it with something else to make it a little bit of less this syrupy, apricotty kind of candy scent and give it a little bit more either zest or, or heavier base with some other scent. And another one that I got just to try, because all of these perfumes I've never tried before in no, in no shape or form. This is Amouage Dia for women. I was looking for a shower gel that would have the zest of old school aldehydes think Chanel number number five and things of that nature. But with 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 more youthful kind of feel to it. And I just finished the what's it called? 
I think it's called Pheromone. It's an oldie. Like, it's an old, very affordable perfume from the 80s. Had it in the shower gel form. It's all right. It's a bit too flat for me as a scent, even for the, for the shower. Um, so I decided to, to give Dia a try. Amouage Dia is supposed to be aldehydes plus intense, fresh type of rose accord. And to me, it's a bit too sour. You know how the rose accords can go into this kind of rose oil territory when it just, it almost turns sour to me. And here, together with aldehydes, they don't really neither elevate it nor deepen it. It just stays into, the, into this kind of very piercing, aldehydic, rosy note that is not my favorite. I also have a decant of Amouage Dia Woman, and I find that actually shower gel I like more, this particular formulation. But again, I'll probably will be mixing it or adding some other perfume to it because not quite, not quite there. Uh, what I wanted to actually to say about the shower gels, especially for Mouage, I don't think I'll be trying any more. If I do, it probably will be the um, their formulations for men because those I find to be a little bit more spicier, a little bit more of heavy on the base side of the of the pyramid um, of how the olfactory design is formed, and that kind of works better personally for me. I find that they are creations that are marketed toward women are either very syrupy, very like aggressively sweet, or just they're just a bit screamish to me. So I don't know. Your opinions might differ. Let me know if you have any bath products from Amouage, which ones do you prefer? And if you have a collection of Amouage for men, fragrances, what are your favorites? So far for me, if I remember correctly, I actually did a review of Amouage fragrances, both for men and for women. If you're curious, you can watch it on my channel. If my memory serves me right, my top three Amouages for men are Fate, either Journey or Jubilation, and, ha, huh, can't remember the other one, the third one. But like fate probably, well honor, honor, I really like honor because it's very peppery, very dry. But I think fate is my number one at the, at the moment and I only have a decant. So I tried to find it and this formulation couldn't, but maybe one day. But I think for now my journey with trying Amouage scents probably is coming to an end. They have some new releases that I'm curious about, but I have no way of trying them anywhere and I don't want to commit to a full-size bottle. So let me know if you have any recommendations of how to try them or where or what kinds would you still recommend I like kind of sample and find a way to, to test. Now toward a rather unexpected PR package that I got. I, I debated whether to show this or not because I, I purposefully ignored a lot of introductory emails from this brand for a long time and they still managed to find my address and send me PR. So I thought about it and was like, okay, you know, kudos for trying, for persistence, but I'm just gonna say what I, what I have to say. So the brand in question is Dossier. I think almost everybody, probably 90% 90, 90 if not more, of people who like perfumes have seen the social media advertisement by Dossier. It's basically yet another Instagram brand that makes cheaper, like more generic versions of more expensive and niche perfumes. So the, the two that they sent me in PR is Floriental Vanilla and Ambery Safran. So, Ambery Safran is essentially, well, the magnetic cup is actually neat. The packaging, I would say, is very minimalistic, but it's high quality. Um, it's, it's pleasant to the touch. I don't see anything about the bottle that would kind of put me off in any, I, like in any way of aesthetically or just in terms of the tactile feeling. So I'll, for their price, I'll give them 10 out of 10 in terms of packaging, if you like that kind of minimalistic IKEA style. The magnetic lid, it's a neat touch. But the fragrance itself is just a cheaper, very, very watered down, genetic, generic version of um, Baccarat Rouge by Francis Krupchan. This is literally yet another dupe. 
This is an overdose of Evernail with something sweet in the middle. And not much else. I think, um, since I'm not a big fan of Evernail, it, it doesn't give me the good vibes. It actually reminds me of medical appointments in my childhood um, because it's, it's very iodine smelling. So I'm going to be regifting this to a friend of mine who loves Baccarat Rouge. I'm sure she'll enjoy some kind of beachy version of Baccarat. For me, mm, I don't know, Ember Saffron. Like if you are looking for a cheap version, for something almost like a hairspray or body spray that's reminiscent of Baccarat Rouge, Dossier Ember Saffron might be it. Um, but in terms of like judging it as an olfactory design, as a perfume, there's nothing there. Like it's just so obviously a clone that to me it's a bit of a like it's a turn off the second one is floriental vanilla yet it reminds me of something else my name is a legion it's probably again yet another clone i just don't have phone near me to look up what they were trying what they were going for but it's so generic, it's so non-specific, it's just, it's like this, you know, like very artificial vanillin with some, it kind of has this sweet plus, although this molecular basis kind of feel. That's about it. Sorry, Gossier. Like, there was a reason why I wasn't really starting a collaboration with them because I just it's just not my cup of tea like all these brands who just clone more popular scents and make them cheaper like first of all they never get it right there's some often there is a reason why perfume costs more there's not only the proprietary parts of it in terms of you know like the copyright issues and the packaging and the brand name and the creativity behind creating a new scent but there's also an issue of ingredients of the production process. This is just, to me, it's like a room spray. Like, I would not be able to distinguish this from hundreds of other perfumes. At that point, like, why use perfume at all? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it really does anything. Um, you just, I guess, smell nice. That's that. And now back to actually what I spent my coins on. I kind of got a little bit um, crazy shopping for embers. And I have an extensive amber scents collection. Extent, like 10, okay, possibly 20 plus. More than I need for my lifetime. And yet the fall came through, yeah, the, this wonderful non-existent fall in Florida when it's still summer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just I guess I, I was in the mood. This is a very rare occasion where I'm synced with the calendar. I want fall weather, I want fall mood, I want fall scents, I want everything to be fall. The harvest, the golden colors, the warm ambery, kind of these like whiskey, bourbon, cocktails type of scent, something very cozy, maybe with a tinge of cinnamon, but again, there is a bit too much emphasis on, of, on cinnamon, in my opinion, in like in the fall of factory design, so I kind of stray away from it. But the amber, man, this year, I just, I bathe, I bathe in ambery scents. And just to prove the point, <laughs> I'm gonna show you, oh, it's, it's quite a few, anyway. This decant that I'm close to finishing, hopefully, in a few weeks. This is Histoire de Parfums Amber 11.4 uh, or 114. I bought this decant from Sandbird years ago and it just stood and I didn't use it. You know why? Because I liked it too much. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense if you don't think about it. I just thought, like, if I like it, so much and I use it up and I won't be able to find a full-size bottle for you know a reasonable price I'll be very unhappy I don't know like there's a whole dysfunctional reasoning behind it so I just would spray it every once in a while and it's such a comfortable oh let me do a little 
little test here. It's such a comfortable, somewhat herbal, you know, with this sense of like dry herbs, maybe even dry hay type of amber. What I like about the dry herbs here, in contrast to Kessington Amber by Ben Holligans, that I also have a decant of, there it's almost the same ideas, but here the dry herbs to me are soothing. They remind me of these kind of herbal teas that are very popular in Russia. And yet there's nothing here that takes me to the sort of medicinal side of herbal scents, you know what I mean? And with Kensington, Kensington Amber by Penhaligans, which is part of their, I think, main collection, I don't know. There, the herbs are taken to the point of like cough syrup or something like that. There's something there that just makes me think of like having a cold in my, ch in my, in my childhood. Here, I just bathe in it. It's literally just taking a hay ride, then being like wrapped in this very comfortable one ambery scarf. Love it. So I've been working on it. I made an executive decision to just kill that decant and finally make it just buy and all buy decision. And as I show you already, actually, huh, this is gonna be unboxing. I thought I would never ever be able to preserve perfume in its original form to do an unboxing live, but here we are. I could not say no to myself. It, in a way, this amber is very simple. I wouldn't call this the most sophisticated, heavy, or it, it doesn't really pull anywhere. If anything, it's a little bit herbaceous. That's it. It's a very middle of, middle of the road ambery scent, but to me, first of all, I love the aesthetic of Histoire de Parfums, like this whole book collection and this kind of modernized art deco clean look i love it i love everything that they're about and if when it comes to just everyday amber something that i enjoy wearing over and over and over again i decided that's just going to be become my everyday amber i got it i think i found a decent price for it on one of the Canadian sites. It's either Fragrance by Da Canada or Perfume Online Da Canada, one of those. And if you still search for it, I think they still have it online for roughly, I wanna say 60 to $70, which in my book is very good for Histoire de Parfums. It's very hard to find them for that price. So this is 60 mil. Very happy, I'm gonna be finishing this decant and now I'm like a very proud owner of yet another book in my collection, olfactory book. And the tester that I got, which is very hard to find, is their opera collection, is 1875. I've been trying to collect all of the opera um, perfumes from them for a long time and eventually just give up because some of the editions are impossible to find on sale, impossible. Some of them just, you have to buy the, them from, from the seller, from, like, from the brand. And I'm slowly mentally getting ready to buy a few bottles, just full price, because I just love it too much. But this one I got lucky with. I bought it blindly, I didn't quite know what I was getting. And everything that I read online about 1875 by Histoire de Parfums was that it's basically, um, a slightly more wearable version of Black Orchid by Tom Ford. Basically Black or Orchid for book snobs, which, let's face it, if there is a snob in, the, in this room, that, that'll be me. I just, I made so many circles around Black, black Orchid, um, Orchid Lumiere, Velvet Orchid, all of these orchids, and I could never really find an orchid version by Tom Ford that I would love, something that I actually would wear. So I decided that if, since I love Histoire de Parfum so much, it's like one of the biggest perfume collections by brand, um, only to be rivaled by L'Artisan Parfumeur, I thought, well, maybe that's the black orchid that will actually plant roots in my heart. What can I tell you? I've been trying to wear it before going to bed just to give it like a good go. 
one side. That's it. For probably more than five times. So I, I, I gave it a good, a good shot. And it just keeps reminding me why I don't like Black Orchid. It's not nearly as harsh as Black Orchid. It's indeed much softer. Almost like with a layer of Kashmir on top of uh, Tom Ford Black Orchid. It's softer blended. It's not nearly as pokey. It's not as mushroomy. And yet, they're, they're too close. They're almost too similar. I'm sure the brand never really aimed at Black Orchid when they were creating this. Like, I refuse to believe that Histoire de Parfums would ever copy anyone in their creations. It's just doesn't, it's just not their thing. They're pretty original in what they do. But yet, knowing what I know now, it's just impossible to escape the comparison. So, is it a more wearable niche? snobbish black orchid yes but do i feel like i'll really really wear it probably not i'm ashamed to say i'm it's right now the only purpose it's gonna serve on my shelves is just you know for the collection <laughs> So most likely, if you're interested, if you, you, if you can't find it or you love Black Orchid and you're willing to collect all of the kind of sisters and brothers and anything remotely similar to that olfactory design, uh, just ping me on social media. We might come up with some kind of exchange plan or, you know, we'll figure something out. Because again, love the packaging, love the concept, the, you know, like the dedication of every bottle to a particular... Um, artistic creation, the execution stellar, just like you would expect from Histoire de Parfums, is just not my thing. I'm not, not gonna wear it, just not, no. And I gave it, I gave it a, a go. All right, and that is not all either. Yet another amber. I, what can I tell you? It's just when it rains, it pours. I put this perfume in my basket over 20 times. It, it always was there and yet always I would find something that I wanted more than this. This is Carnet Barcelona Ambar de, del Sur. I hope I'm saying it. No, I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly. But anyway, I got myself a bucket. This is just huge. What do we have here? 100 mil? I can't figure it out. Yeah, it's 100 mil. For whatever reason, it feels like... It's like a good size whiskey glass, to be honest. And it's almost an identical clone of Old Fashioned. It says that it's amber plus woods. Yes. And yet it's boozy to me. I feel a very distinctive, this kind of like bittersweet, alcoholic old-fashioned -y kind of sweetness that comes through. Maybe it's the vanilla, I don't know, maybe it's something at the heart, but Ambar del Sur, to me, it's pretty much day drinking. It's not the longest lasting. Comparatively to Megalium or what's the other stuff that they have with incense? Oh, I'm I'm blanking. Okay, I can't remember. So, Carnet Barcelona is not known for the most beastly perfumes, but they do have perfumes that have a lot of projection and decent longevity. This is not it. This is more like run-of-the-mill what they're known for. Very souffle, soft, almost nude-like creations that kind of just sit close to your skin, almost like a, a souffle type of consistency. So I'm kind of glad that I got myself the larger bottle because I probably will be just bathing in it. It's very easy one to overspray. It's a very overspray friendly. It's just, it's one of those kind of crowd pleasers in my mind. It's just very cozy, boozy, 
easy to understand, easy to enjoy, yet is it the most unique amber? Would it be like make it top three for me? Probably not. In that sense, actually amber 11.4 by Histoire de Parfums to me is a little bit more nuanced, a little bit deeper, a little bit more interesting. This is just one of those unexpected 5 p.m. old fashions that every once in a while happen in every person's life, I'm sure. Even that is not the end. This is not quite amber amber, but it falls to me into the same kind of category of soft, sweet scents. And this is the one that I wanted for the longest time ever, after I finished the decant. This is Oil Fiction by uh, Juliet Has a Gun. It's their boutique line, expensive one, and it comes with this fancy white velvet pouch. It's the whole box, and the box doesn't have the perfume because I already put it somewhere. Let's find it. It's like half an hour later, <laughs> finally found it. <laughs> Don't ask me where. <clears throat> this is why I'm not doing unboxings because, you know, like, there's no way, there's no way that I'll receive a package, it will not rip it off immediately. So, okay, this is how it's supposed to look like when you open it for the first time, and I think there's also a little bit of like a, some kind of crinkly paper there. It's very well packaged, it's very high quality box. You can store things in it if you want to. Probably will use it for jewelry. Oil Fiction. At this point, I think I've sequentially owned at least four different fragrances from this boutique line by Juliet Has a Gun, and one after another, I let them go. I think at least have two that I'm trying to find a second home for. So if you're interested, again, hit me on social media, we'll figure something out. But this is the one that I keep going back to every time I get a decant from a friend or like have a chance to try it on. It's just quietly addictive. So oil fiction, let's see what they actually write about it. How do they represent? An exceptional perfume extract imagined around the most sublime and luxurious ingredients, opulent, voluptuous, undeniable. I must agree. Out of all of them, all of them are somewhat similar in terms of that they have this almost piercing, musky base that is typical for Juliet Has a Gun perfumes. If you tried their, uh, actually, I have something here. Like this is the only one that I can really enjoy wearing by by their main line, and this is Mad Madame. But all of them, Lady Vengeance, Mad Madame. Char Miss Charming, Ramantina, and like and others, they all have this very like kind of to me kind of sour sour musky base, and a lot of these kind of do have a similar tone. Plus tuberose, unfortunately tuberose gives me horrible headaches. I I'm kind of just I don't want to say allergic because it's a medical term, but you know what I mean. Like I can't quite tolerate tuberose in most of perfumes. This is no exception, it does have tuberose, but to me it's hidden somewhere behind the fifth curtain, so I cannot even really trace it that well. So if you see the pyramid and you see tuberose there and you get, oh, not, not for me, I hate tuberose, not hate, as I told you, I can't really tolerate tuberose as a prominent note, uh, but I am perfectly fine with oil fiction. It's quietly kind of like a plum wine type of sweetness. I can call it syrupy, I can call it jam like and I can call it souffle like. It's almost like drinking plum wine to me. So that kind of and a little bit off roundness this is it's it's very quiet as a perfume i would not recommend it to those of you who want a perfume to have a projection to have a lot of like life far away from your body this is something that kind of almost forces you to sniff the skin but in a way it's alluring because the more i feel it the more i want to get close to the source of it so in a way i would call this a perfume for like a first kiss type of perfume if you want to be 
magnetic in terms of the physical touch, but it's not a, the loudest perfume. And it's, again, something that I think will go well with layering and is kind of overspray friendly. I try to say no to oil fiction so many times. I like restrained myself from buying it for over three years. But every single time I saw it, I was like, mm, damn, I kind of like it. So I eventually pulled the plug. I'm the happy owner of oil fiction. Highly recommend if you like nudie, seductive, demure type of perfumes. And when it comes to fresh purchases, that's pretty much it. I have a few older ones that I just didn't show you over the months, but I think we probably should talk about them in, in some form of, you know, collections, you know, top this, top that, or maybe perfumes for fall. Generally speaking, I, I'm open to ideas. What do you guys want to talk about? What do you want to see? What kind of themes, questions, video ideas you think are missing but needed right now to like put you in the right mood let me know and i'll like we'll cook something we'll cook something together we'll make uh, some fun video stuff happening we'll be waiting for your comments thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video don't forget to like and subscribe yes